you are watching Adjuster TV. Hey IA and welcome to the IA Path Auto IA Show where we walk you through how to become a successful independent adjuster by starting, diversifying and increasing your earnings with auto claims. If you're ready, we can get started right now. On today's episode, I'm going to walk you through how to show proper etiquette to a owner's vehicle. Why is that important? Because you don't want to get sent home early from a catastrophic storm because the owner has complained about you. Now, this may sound far-fetched, but trust me, this is a big deal. You don't want the CEO of USA Insurance or Allstate or the cat supervisor coming to you or to your boss and saying, get this guy out of here. We got a complaint against him. For all the best tips, tricks, and tools, head on over to Adjuster TV's YouTube channel and click the subscribe button. Also, hit the bell notification so you can be notified every time we come out with a new video. All right, I got to tell you about something important. Now, you may not even have thought about this yet, but there is a proper etiquette to inspecting somebody's vehicle. There's proper etiquette at a drive-in when you take the owner's keys, what do you do, how do you act, how do you treat their car, and so at a drive-in, you're doing 20 cars a day, and you can kind of forget that this customer, this car, is a separate life. It's their, they have a whole story behind it, and sometimes we can find ourselves treating them with disrespect, but a really big part to the insurance company and to the body shops and to the IA firms you represent is that etiquette because this is most likely the second biggest investment most people will ever make is their vehicle so they have their home but now this is their vehicle and if they see you disrespecting their vehicle they see you not treating their vehicle correctly or worried that you're going to hurt it then they are going to likely have an issue with you so one of the big things that we have to think about is when we're dealing with taller vehicles suvs vans big trucks in texas especially uh, we got there's a right and a wrong way to do it um, to be able to get up high enough to see things the best way is if you have a step stool so something like this either a two-step stool a bench like this anything like that to let you get up without stepping on the customer's vehicle so then you can get up here you can look at the hood you can look at the roof rail you can get good angles and that's perfectly fine and acceptable etiquette now the, some people will do this and this can be acceptable let me show you some people will step up on the trim panel or at the door jam here like this if you're going to do that you need to ask the owner and if the owner isn't around you if you do that which i don't recommend you need to clean this door jam and trim off because you're going to leave your footprints there your feet are dusty and that is not going to make the owner feel like you're giving them red carpet service and a lot of our job at these storms is to help the owner feel comfortable so the pdr company we're working for or the body shop we're meeting out of will hopefully get to fix the customer's vehicle and at the very minimum the customer needs to feel like the insurance company values them because you represent the insurance company to that owner. They're directly relating how you treat their car to how the insurance company looks at them. And if you're disrespecting their car, they're going to feel disrespected. Here's another trick to help you get up at some points. I still ask the owner for permission, but it's a way safer bet than stepping on a door trim or jam is you can step up on a tire. So I like to put my hand maybe around a luggage rack or something up here just for stability. And I'm going to step up and do this. And this gives me a tall enough vantage point to be able to see the roof rail and the roof, but I haven't had to step on their interior. But I still highly recommend that you get permission from the owner. Now, some more etiquette. If you're wearing a metal belt, I like the plastic belts because they're not near as dangerous to cars. If you're wearing a belt that has a metal buckle, you need to spin your belt around to where the buckle's in the back. Because as we're looking at dents like this, it's very likely that your belt 
can scratch it here. Another thing, pins. Dear Lord, do not put pins in your pocket. Because guess what? If you have a pin in your pocket and then you sit down in that seat, you might mark up the seat of the owner's vehicle. These are things you got to be aware about is how are you treating the customer's car? Be careful. Another thing, jewelry. So I have a tattoo wedding ring. I don't have a traditional wedding ring anymore. I only have the tattoo ring. But if you have a big ring on your finger and you're touching somebody's car, you can scratch their car with your ring or your jewelry. And then they can demand potentially that you, the insurance company or the body shop fix that panel because you scratched their car. I've actually seen it where an owner complained when one adjuster just did this on a fender and he had a ring on. He said, you scratched my, you scratched my fender. You need to fix that. And so we ended up having to fix the whole fender just because someone did this. So be very aware of what you're doing to the owner's car. Be very aware of how they're viewing what you're doing. Now, also, when you're driving the customer's car around to pull it into a shop, a lot of times there's a lot of squealing sounds. And if it appears like you're taking off fast because of the type of ground it is, it can make a really loud sound, like you're peeling out the tires. We don't want that, okay? When you're moving people's cars, you need to go slow, intentional, control, and respectful. This is very, very, very important. The owner views how you drive that car around with how you're gonna treat their vehicle and how you're gonna treat their claim. So we must show the most, utmost respect when driving uh, another person's vehicle. If you're interested in becoming an auto damage appraiser or independent auto adjuster as a part of a diversified career, you can head over to ipath.com and click the how to find work button on the website. That'll give you a free copy of the independent adjusters playbook. That book I wrote so you could have a step-by-step -step guide on how to use auto in your career to find a successful home in independent adjusting. Thank you very much for watching the Auto IA Show and continue to claim your life this week.